Hi, I'm Glyn Jewis. I'm back now with a new video for you. After having a bit of a break, we've been really busy with other work, so I've been about a couple of months out now, so I apologize for that. But I am back now with a very quick video for you. This time I wanna go through something really simple, and it's frequency separation to show you how we can actually remove a shadow. Now that shadow in the picture that you'll see on screen here is one that's been created by cross lighting. So as the light from a soft box is in front of our subject here, as the light comes across, it's just hitting the rim of the glasses, creating that little bit of a shadow. You'd probably think ordinarily really simple to remove using something like curves or the healing brush or whatever, but actually that's not the best way to do it. I think the best way is frequency separation, so that's what I want to show in this video. But before we dive over into the video, a huge thanks from me to you folks for subscribing to this channel because this is now November 2015 and we've just gone past the 100,000 subscriber mark, which is absolutely fantastic. So again, massive thanks from me, but please keep spreading the love, let people know about this channel and get them to subscribe. It's free after all. But hey, that's enough of uh, me on screen. Let's dive right over onto the video now so you can actually see this technique. Okay, so in this video then, what I wanna do is just show you one part of the retouch, and that's how I remove this shadow here that we can see over on the left-hand side of the picture. Now, just so you know, that was created during the photo shoot, obviously, the way that the picture was lit using cross lighting. So if you can imagine, we've got a soft box to the front and this side of our subject, so that we're lighting up all this side of the face, as the light comes across, it's then hit the rim of the glasses and then created this shadow coming down the side there. Now that might not be a problem for you. You might be quite happy to leave that there, but for me, at the very least, I like to reduce it, or in some cases, remove it completely. Now we're gonna do that using frequency separation. There may be lots of other different ways that you want to try to do that, but I think having lots of techniques within your kind of retouching tool bag that you can call on is a good thing. So let's just go through a very simplistic form of frequency separation. To do this, over in the layers panel here, we've got our original background image. And I need to create two copies of that. So I hold down my Command or Control key and press the J key twice to get those two copies. The first copy I'm going to call Color. And then the upper layer, I'm then gonna call that Content. And we'll just turn off that Content layer and click. So we're going to work, first of all, on the Color layer. Now, the reason we, take, we create these two layers here, it's basically going to allow us, in this case, to work on the color, which is this shadow here, without affecting the content. And that's really important because as we're working on skin, there's lots of texture, lots of detail. To be able to remove this shadow, but keep all that texture and patterns all as exactly as they are originally, is gonna be a real, real big thing for us. It's gonna help the retouch look so much more realistic. So now that we've done that, let's just zoom out. We're only working on the color layer, the content layer you can see over in the layers panel layers turned off. So first of all, then, let's go to the filter menu, choose blur and Gaussian blur. And this is a really simplistic way of only having the color on this particular layer. And we do that by blurring it. We can see it first of all, we have the radius here of 0.1 pixels. And at that point, we can still see all the sharpness, all the contours, all the detail within our image. So what we're going to do is increase the radius just gradually till we get to the point where we lose all the sharpness, all the kind of contours and detail. We can still see that it's a portrait, but all those colors now have kind of like blended in. And I find with this image here, a radius of around about 15 pixels is enough to lose all that sharpness. You'll find with every pitch that you use this technique on, the amount of blur that you actually need to use will vary. But in this one, 15 is pretty good. Once we do that, we'll then click OK. So that now is our color. Let's now go to the content layer and turn that layer on. Now then what we need to do is go to the image menu, choose adjustments, and the first adjustment we make is brightness and contrast. And it's really important here that when this dialog box comes up, we've got this little dialog box just here, a little tick box that says use legacy. Now on new versions, most up-to-date versions of Photoshop, you need to make sure you put a little tick in there before you do anything else. Basically what we're doing here is tell Photoshop not to be quite so clever as it is, but to use its old algorithms, its old ways of working things out. So we do that by putting in the used legacy. If we don't, the technique just doesn't work anywhere near as good. 
Once we put the tick in there, we then just go to the contrast and we change the contrast to minus 50. And that will always be minus 50 no matter what picture it is you're working on. And then click OK. Then we go to the filter menu, we choose other and we come to the high pass filter. And very simply, all we need to do here, the amount of pixel radius we add in is the exact same amount that we actually blurred it to, which in this case was 15. And we can see the image starting to show the gray layer here, show, show through the gray layer here, we just click OK. And then finally, we come to the layers panel and on the content layer, we change the blend mode from normal to linear light. And really at this stage, you shouldn't see any difference at all in your image. If I just turn every layer off, apart from the background, you can see it pretty much stays the same there. Nothing is changing on our model's face. If you do see a change, it's more than likely because you forgot to put that little tick in that used legacy box. All right, so now our image is prepared and ready for us to get rid of this shadow. To do that, I'm gonna click on the color layer and I'm gonna add a new blank layer now. I'm gonna call that one there shadow. And you can see in the layers panel, this new blank layer here is in between the color and the content layer. I'm now gonna come over to the toolbar and I'm gonna choose my clone stamp tool and I'm gonna use it with a very, very low setting. You can see right at the top of the screen here, the opacity of the clone stamp tool, I'm gonna to keep it down to around about 10%. The reason for that is it's always best when you're retouching to do small amounts and just build up rather than going in there too strong. So now using this clone stamp tool, I will also make sure at the top here where you've got the options for the clone stamp tool, where it says sample, you choose current and below. So now if you think about it, the way that we've set up this layers panel over here, when we're working on this nude shadow layer, we're only gonna be sampling from the color. So we're not gonna get any repeating patterns or any texture from the skin. We're only gonna be sampling that blurred color below. And you'll see now why that is so important. So let's just zoom in. With the clone stamp tool, now what I do is where we've got the shadow either side of that, I'm just gonna hold down my Alt or Option key to sample some of the skin color either side of the shadow and then start dabbing it. And as I do that, as I move up the shadow, I'm just continually sampling the color either side of that shadow as I move up and down just to overlay that color on top of that shadow to eventually remove it completely. And you can see as I'm doing that, it's very subtle because we're only working there at like a 10% strength of the clone stamp tool. Very, very subtle, but the actual shape, the contour, the texture of the skin is remaining the same. No repeating patterns whatsoever. And it's just build up. Let's do this very, very quickly so you can see how this works. Now that's just a few seconds worth of work. Let's zoom out, we can see already how much we've reduced that. So we could keep on going just to reduce it just a little bit more and just build up on there just to remove it like so. That's pretty good, that'll do for now. So at least we're reducing that shadow, that's looking good. Now what you might find is that once you've done that, the area where you've actually sampled it, it although the texture and the contour is great, the actual structure of that part just looks a little bit soft. So what I like to do now is just add a little bit of clarity and make some very, very minor adjustments in the camera raw filter. So we're working on the shadow layer. If I now just go over to the filter menu, choose camera raw, we can't actually do it because all it's gonna bring over is the content of that layer, which is just this really small amount here that we've sampled across. So we'll just cancel that. I'm gonna click on the content layer and I'm just gonna create a merged or stamp layer at the top of the layer stack. To do that, there is a long keyboard shortcut, which is Control, Alt, Shift and E or Command, Option, Shift and E, but I'll just go select and all, and then edit, copy merged, which is copying all those layers, edit and paste. And now at the top of the layer stack, we've got one new layer, which if I turn all the other layers off, you'll notice that nothing changes because this new layer at the top of the layer stack is a combination of all these layers below. Now that I've done that, then I'll come over to the filter menu, I'll choose camera raw filter. And the great thing is now, let's just zoom in just a touch. I'll get something like the adjustment brush and I'll just turn on the mask in the bottom right hand corner here and say that this area here is where we want to affect and we can see that with that red overlay. Let's just turn off that red overlay now. And then over on the right hand side here, let's just start playing around with some of these sliders to see if we can help this cloned area 
to blend in much better now with the structure and the detail within that skin either side of it. So let's just bring up the shadows. Let's just add a little bit of clarity in there. Yeah, let's just bring up the shadows just a little bit more. Maybe just a touch more contrast. And the great thing is now, in these updates, we have the dehaze slider within Camera Raw and also in Lightroom. It doesn't have to be used for reducing the amount of fog or haze in a picture. It's always great to just try out to see if they'll help you out in any other kind of picture. And I found by using the dehaze slider, that really does help out as well to blend in that kind of area there. You can see that's before and after, before and after. See how it's really helping that skin to blend in? Just a dehaze slider, bring that across to around about minus 29, 30, something like that. Maybe a touch more clarity, a little bit more contrast, something like that. And then let's just click OK. So now we just zoom out, somewhere like this. Let's put all the layers where we've actually made the changes, the top layer all the way down to here. Let's put these into a new group, so highlight them all. Come to the little fly out menu there and put new group from layers and we'll call that shadow removal, like so. So now when we turn that group on and off, we can see how quickly and easily and realistically re remove that shadow. So if you didn't want it to remove completely because we've put all these layers into a group, you could then just control the opacity of that group just to bring it in just a little bit. So it's not completely gone, but it's certainly reduced, but me, I like it to be reduced completely. So there you go, a very, very quick and simple way of using the frequency separation to remove shadows. I'm Glyn Dewis, and I'll see you next time.